Aboriginal people have an, a knowledge system that is so complex and have a lot of answers for us and how we should better live with this planet into the future. We can't separate climate change from management of land. They both go hand in hand. I wasn't surprised to see the country go up that way in 2019 when those wildfires hit Australia. I wasn't surprised at all. The drought that we were going through over a number of years was just horrific. And on top of that, the landscape had not been managed. It was full of rubbish. It was a ticking time bomb. It's all about uh, creating biodiversity. It's all about saving lives and, and respecting all the lives that live in those ecosystems. We apply one fire, a spot fire first in one place, and then the smoke will start to leak out and, and the animals will smell the smoke. And then they will start to act. They'll, the insects will start to climb the trees to get safe in the canopies. And the kangaroo and other animals will go to the next ecosystem, which isn't far and which won't burn because it's too green. And they know all this knowledge. They know where to go, all the animals. Snakes go underground and ants go under the logs and, and all these, these things happen. And then we have animals that, that come to the fire, like the hawks will fly in and, and dive down to catch some grasshoppers. And then we see the kookaburras coming in, sitting in the branches. And the owls come at night after the fire. And they come looking at night time, looking for something to eat as well. And when we apply that fire, it's a single single fire in a circle so it burns in a circle and it goes out like this and when it burns like that there's 360 degrees of escape for the animals and because we're burning at that right time in those certain places then the, the fire also burns very slowly and even little spiders can get away and little insects can get away except we don't want the tick, ticks to get away because they're so slow and that's okay because we don't want to get bitten by ticks. But all the other insects, they all move and sometimes you can't even see the bark of the trees because there's so many insects climbing up the trees and it's just so beautiful to watch. And you get to see how so many thousands of lives are safe from burning the right way. The fire being so cool that it doesn't harm the canopy, very low fire that just creeps around the country, just cleaning up the mess, only burning where it needs to burn leaving a design of mosaic design pattern in the landscape. The right temperatures for the seeds that belong in those soils and then up come the fresh shoots of grasses straight away. We see green grass within a couple of days when we burn the right way in country. And in some cases in a couple of weeks you wouldn't even know we burned that land because it's a carpet of green grass right across the landscape. So when we light the fire, we don't just, you know, barge into the landscape and use a drip torch and, and put heaps of fire through the landscape. It's, that's um, putting too much fire too quickly in the land. It's no good. So it's all about reading the land and understanding the land. It's the trees that, that tell us where to go and, and um, where, where to burn. And then from there, we read the grasses to apply those fires in the right place at the right time. How Aboriginal people have worked that out over thousands of years is by reading in the landscape. So there's all different timing through all the different ecosystems. Even though it might sound so simple, there's so many layers. So burning country is about food. Um, it's not about hazard reduction. It's about making food for the animals, food for people. And when we are doing that, we have green, green, lush landscapes and not dried out and neglected landscapes and by doing that you gave the fire its rightful role and which is a friend 
which helps our landscape, improves our landscapes and um, keeps us safe from wildfires and that's what we need to work towards. When a land is healthy, um, it has more opportunity and more chance to, um, to deal with drought and, and other serious fires, wildfires and so forth. And that's been evident through traditional knowledge that has been done for thousands of years has been based on making the land healthy and protecting the trees and bringing up the right vegetation and the right soils and the right ecosystems. As humans, um, we've, um, we've come less intelligent when it comes to connecting to our landscapes and to our natural environment. And when we look at the elders from before, like the old people, they were like walking encyclopedias. And my mentors were like encyclopedias, they had all this knowledge of the land and they had all this information, they even songs and dances and a whole culture that was, that's connected to the landscape. And, and, and now um, we look at people today and they, they look at the land and have no idea what they're looking at. And that's alarming. Yet we're so intelligent when it comes to technology. We're so intelligent when people look at their phones and they can tap, tap away and and, and all these things and um, you know we can do our maths and do our sums and read and all these things but we've lost all this intelligence of knowing about our mother earth and the country and and having a culture that's connected to that that's healthy and and and, and educates us and uh, around our responsibilities as people and how we play our role within the environment that's all gone and that's why we're in this trouble. We need to start to um, understand that we're a part of the problem and we need, to, um, we need to look at ourselves really very, very hard through the lens of the landscape. We're part of the problem, but also we're, we're also the solution. We can't separate climate change from management of land. They both go hand in hand and both are extremely important and they are both are connected as well and a result of each other. And that's why we need to see this holistically. And that's where traditional knowledge, you know, is so important. And we gotta know who we are. We gotta see that reflection of ourselves if we're gonna change. And there's one thing that the land can do, and that is reflect who we are.